Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be chatting about some game-changing, iconic beauty products. Now, if you are one of the lovely, wonderful people who has recently subscribed to my channel, you uh, probably don't know too much about my beginnings and how I got started here. Uh, but basically, I am also a blogger. So I was blogging long before I started a YouTube channel. My blog is called Little Blushing Birdie. I started it in June of 2013, so we're going on six years this year which is totally insane and uh, I will say I don't post my blog anywhere near as frequently as I used to now that I also have YouTube I've just been trying to juggle that plus Instagram and all my other socials with everything else that I do in my life but it is something that I've had the intention of getting back to more regularly. I love writing, I love photography, so my blog definitely still has my heart and it's it's my baby, it's where I began. So if you haven't ever checked it out before, it is always linked in the description box of all my videos. But uh, as the six year mark of my blog slowly approaches, like I just started thinking about all the products that I've tested within the last five to six years and all the trends that have come and gone and just how much this industry has changed. It's nuts. I mean, five years in the beauty industry is a long time and a lot is different. And I thought it might be a fun idea for a video to reflect on some of the like most iconic cult classic products that have come on the scene within the last five years. Because so many of these things are so popular now and so hyped, it's almost as if they've always been here. But if you actually look back and do the math, like they've only been around for maybe a couple of years, max five, six, like some of these things, most of these things didn't exist when I started blogging. So it's really crazy to think about. So we're going to be recapping what I believe are the 10 most iconic beauty launches of the last five to six years. So yeah, I hope you guys will enjoy this little recap reminiscing with me. And I would also love to know if you think there is something else that belongs on this list that's launched within the last like five years or so, definitely leave a comment down below and let me know what it is. But on that note, let's get into what I picked. So one of the first products I thought of when I sat down to come up with this list was the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. This is definitely one of the most iconic drugstore beauty products right now, and it definitely is the product that put Physician's Formula like on the map. The brand has been around for years and years and years, and like I remember people talking about it when I first started blogging. Like they they started long before that, and they definitely had products that people raved about. Like I think they're like strip eyeshadows. I remember Tati talking about their organic wear mascara. Like they had some products that had some love in the beauty community, but nothing has even come close to the hype that Butter Bronzer has gotten. And if you've never tried this, it is entirely deserving of the hype. It's a beautiful formula. It's very, very silky. Like it has the word butter in the name and that is exactly the type of texture you're getting from this powder. It's not chalky at all. It's very blendable. It's very buildable. It goes on very natural and it smells like a tropical paradise. It smells like that sort of sunscreeny, beachy deliciousness, which some people are not gonna like, but a lot of people really love. Scented makeup just as a whole trend has become very, very popular over the years. This is definitely one of the products that has perpetuated that trend. And when I think of drugstore launches, I just feel like I don't think there is anything else that's launched in the last five years that has gotten as much love as this product. It has just become a cult classic. Physicians Formula has expanded this line to include blushes and highlighters and eyeshadows now. Like it's, it's become a huge staple of the brand and I feel like just as a drugstore bronzer, it's probably one of the most continually recommended products that I've seen in blogging and in YouTube. The second product that I wanna talk about, and these are in no particular order, by the way, I'm like, I'm not ranking them, I just kind of arbitrarily put them in an order from one to 10, it doesn't mean anything. But the second product I wanna talk about is this guy, which is the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector Pressed. Like I had to do my homework to try to figure out exactly when this guy hit the scene. It was a little bit difficult to, to pin down because it looks like Becca Cosmetics as a brand existed in the early 2000s, but then like they completely 
revamped, relaunched themselves around 2013, and they had the liquid shimmery skin perfectors to start, but I don't think they released the pressed ones right away. So these guys showed up somewhere between 2013 and 2014. I don't know exactly when, but it is just so weird to think about a world without this guy because this has become like the highlighter standard. Like this particular formula, I feel like is what made the whole glowing, blinding, popping highlighter trend a thing in the first place. We know the Balmsberry Luminizer existed and I'm not sure exactly when that product launched and I feel like that was one of the first really glowy highlights to kind of hit the beauty scene, but I feel like it wasn't until the Shimmering Skin Perfector launched that the highlighter craze like took off. And then since then, now we've seen so many highlighters launch from Ofra and Jouer and Too Faced and Tarte and like every single brand has a highlight and everyone is offering like, you know, their variations of like super glowy blinding highlight or sort of more natural, subtle, soft highlight. But like, I don't know, when I think about the OG highlight of highlights, I feel like I think of Becca Opal, Becca Moonstone, Becca Pearl, like those were the first generation of like the really blinding glowy highlight that has made the trend what it is today. Speaking of uh, trend setters, can we have a moment for the Stila Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadows? Liquid glitters, metallic shadows, that whole thing is like a huge trend right now and it's all because of this guy. And it's funny because I feel like prior to the launch of this product, Stila was a very underrated brand. Like they would have some cool products. I really liked their eyeshadow palettes back in the day. The like in the light palette or in the something palette. I had a purple one I used to use all the time because I had a purple ballroom costume when I was in college. So I used to always wear purple eyeshadow to match my costume when I was competing for dance. But I feel like they were never a brand that got like a ton of hype. Like they had their liquid eyeliner, the stay all day that everybody raved about and their liquid lipsticks got a fair amount of hype. But like other than that, I feel like the brand was not really talked about very much, especially in comparison to like Too Faced and Tarte, like in Benefit, they got a lot of attention circa 2013, 2014, 2015. I feel like Stila was just kind of like a notch below that as far as the hype went. And then they launched this baby and I feel like this product has probably made Stila as a brand more money than like everything else combined. And again, it's for good reason. These are by far the best like glittery liquid eyeshadows I've ever tried. And this particular shade, Kit and Karma, I think is my favorite of all the ones I've tried because it is the most glittery and gorgeous like it's just so insanely sparkly and beautiful and like there is a little bit of fallout with this especially if you have a tendency to touch your eyes like you're gonna scratch some of the glitter off if you do that but for the most part it's just like super brilliant super long wearing and like the quality of the actual glitter that's in here is very very luxe like it doesn't look cheap and plasticky like it's got a beautiful beautiful shine it's got multiple colors so it's got like a multi-dimensional finish and now they've expanded this range to include so many new colors so many fun shades and i feel like every brand is trying to copy them now like everyone and their mother is launching some kind of product that is a dupe to this but none of them are quite on the same level as the original glitter and glows. These are the OG, these are the trendsetters. This is the guy that made liquid glitter shadow a thing and it's still my favorite. Now this next one I feel like is a little bit more uh, under the radar. I feel like this product to me, I see as the trendsetter, but I feel like it as a product is not currently as hyped. And that is the Jouer Skinny Dip lip topper. So we all know like the glitter lips, the lip toppers is like a huge, huge trend right now. Every brand has been launching all kinds of glittery glosses and lip toppers, but I feel like it all really began with the popularity of this guy right here. When Jouer launched the Skinny Dip Lip Topper, I feel like so many people were obsessed with this. Like it used to get a crazy, crazy amount of hype. And it's a really beautiful product. I mean, it adds like 
Look at that shine. I mean, next to the Stila, it almost almost gives off similar vibes, but it's for your lips. It doesn't have any like chunky, gritty pieces of glitter. It it feels almost like the texture of a liquid lipstick. It's not glossy or gloopy. It's very creamy and smooth, but it just adds a beautiful shine on top of your lips. And I feel like so many people went nuts for this. And then everyone and their mother, every other brand launched their version. And I think since then, people have kind of forgotten about the Jouer one. People don't talk about this guy anymore. But if it wasn't for Skinny Dip, I don't think we would have the entire glittery, sparkly lip topper trend that we do now. So let's talk about a product that I actually don't have. And I'm very surprised that I don't have considering my makeup preferences. So I think one of the most iconic eyeshadow palette launches of the last five years was the Anastasia Beverly Hills Modern Renaissance palette. First of all, I feel like Modern Renaissance was the palette that redefined warm toned neutrals for the industry. Like they introduced these very warm, berry toned kind of reddish shades. And I don't think any brand before that had ever gone quite so colorful with their neutral palettes. And I feel like that launch came out and that palette was just different and just colorful enough to make people really excited about it. It wasn't just like another boring neutral palette full of browns, like it was something special. And on top of that, the eyeshadow formula was amazing and I feel like almost redefined Anastasia as a brand, like the quality of their eyeshadows, Modern Renaissance showed what they could do and I feel like not only did the brand's popularity explode at that point, but I feel like the entire beauty industry shifted at that point because every brand after that started releasing these warm toned neutral eyeshadow palettes. And I think about like this PR search that's been going on with ABH that they just kind of wrapped up and how people are like dying to be on the ABH PR list. And Anastasia as a brand has been around for a long time. They've been known for their amazing brow products. And I feel like all the glow kits had tons of success, but I honestly feel like the post modern renaissance era for abh like that was that was the tipping point for them for them to be a brand that was so respected and so sought after because i feel like once they released that palette i think people just went crazy for the brand and have been paying a lot more attention to what they've been releasing ever since and i think that's also why subculture was such like a dramatic event because people got so hyped about modern renaissance and they knew what the brand was capable of when subculture launched people were pissed off they were very upset that that palette was a little bit different and more difficult to work with so i just think that when i look back in these last five six years i see there was like a shift like modern renaissance when that launched there was like a turning point in the beauty industry both in the types of palettes and things that other brands were launching and then also just for Anastasia itself. Now this next one is super crazy to think about, but I looked it up and like, this is kind of a, a weird one because technically this product has been around for over a decade. Like I wanna say this brand launched in the mid 2000s. So technically the product has been in existence for longer than five years, but it wasn't really being marketed to the public to like average consumers and it wasn't until I think 2014 2015 that this product actually hit Sephora stores so I'm counting it as a launch in the last five years because nobody knew what it was and I kind of see it as like the brand being introduced to Sephora as it's like official launch to the public and what I'm talking about is the beauty blender. Back in the day when I first started blogging, there were no beauty blenders. Like people didn't know what they were, they didn't use them, which is so insane to think about. Like what did I use to put on my makeup? Probably a brush because that's just what I was used to using. And prior to the launch of this guy, I feel like, I mean, cosmetic sponges have been around for freaking ever, but people didn't wet them and you pretty much only use them with like liquid and cream products. It was just like a very different way of applying your makeup. And like, I totally remember using those little wedge sponges to put on my makeup in high school. Cause that's just like what you did. But then this guy launched and the whole concept of a reusable sponge and something that was shaped to really get into precise areas of your face. And it just like 
completely change the way we do our makeup. Like nowadays, there's a million and one beauty blender dupes. There's all kinds of sponges and weird kinds of shapes being launched. And it all started because of this little guy. Because when this was introduced to Sephora, beauty influencers started to like get the word of this, try it out, and people absolutely fell in love with it and loved the way that it made their makeup look. It just like completely revolutionized everything. Like, could you imagine what the world of makeup would be like without the beauty blender? It's weird to think about. So I wanna give it up for another product that I don't actually have. I have tried it, I've gotten a sample, but I've never actually purchased it before. And that is the Fenty Beauty Pro Filter Foundation. Now obviously, the actual formula of the Pro Filter Foundation I don't think is anything that's super revolutionary, but Rihanna totally blew up the beauty scene when she launched her brand and released a foundation with like 50 shades. Yes, there were other brands at the time like MAC and Makeup Forever that had very extensive shade ranges of their foundation, but they were brands that were mostly like catering towards makeup artists and I don't know if they launched all those shades all at once or if they expanded them over time, but I feel like Fenty was the first like commercially oriented brand that just showed up on the scene and was like, no excuses, we are going to launch an inclusive shade range, 50 shades, blam, here you go. And I think because of Fenty Beauty, so many more people now are just aware of the fact that the makeup industry is not very inclusive and that if you're a person of color, your options for makeup are much more limited than if you have lighter skin. And since then, it's just been a huge shift and become like a huge topic of conversation. And now whenever brands try to launch a new foundation and they don't have a decent shade range, they get totally roasted. And none of that would have probably ever happened if Rihanna hadn't come out and done what she did. So I just knew I definitely had to include the Pro Filter Foundation in my list of the top 10 most iconic beauty products of the last five or six years because it's just completely changed the conversation and finally put the focus on something that's been a problem for a very, very long time, but a lot of people just had the mm, privilege to ignore it. So I definitely give it to Rihanna for doing that. I think that it's helped to move the beauty industry in a more positive direction. And I think it was just like a, a very, very impactful, impactful product to hit the scene. Now this next one, I feel like most of you guys are probably just waiting, like you knew this was coming, you knew I was going to say this, it was just a matter of when, but we can't have a list of the top 10 most iconic products that have launched in the last five years and not include Tarte Shape Tape. Something about this guy has just totally redefined our expectations of concealer. I feel like both with the applicator and with the coverage, Shape Tape, came on the scene and just blew everybody else out of the water. And now we are seeing this trend of like a lot of brands have been launching full coverage concealers. They've been mimicking the applicator. It's like the product to dupe right now. And if you guys watch my videos, you know I've tried quite a few different concealers over the last couple of years and nothing has really knocked Shape Tape out of its like top spot for me. The Too Faced multi-use concealer that launched last year is probably the closest thing. I do really like that one and I think it provides beautiful coverage. But honestly, since I've gone back to using this again, especially since I have been wearing the new face tape foundation and like using this with it, I just freaking love Shape Tape. It works so well. It doesn't crease on me. It lasts. It just has crazy good coverage. I like the applicator. You get a good amount of product in here. Not as much as the Too Faced. That's like crazy how much product you get. But even with regular use, one of these tubes lasts me a very long time and I just freaking, I freaking love it. And I feel like when I think about iconic beauty products, I can't not include this because I mean, really, any concealer launches, what's the first thing they say? Is it a dupe for Shape Tape? So there's no denying this guy has been pretty popular and pretty game changing in the beauty industry. All right, so if I am counting correctly, we should be down to the final two products. The first of which I actually don't have to show you. I've never actually owned, which is surprising because it is such a cult classic product. But that guy is the Too Faced chocolate bar palette, like the original one. Now, the chocolate bar palette was not 
the first scented makeup product that ever existed. And it wasn't the first scented makeup product from Too Faced. I'm pretty sure their bronzers launched long before they launched the whole chocolate bar palette series. But I singled out the chocolate bar palette in specific, not only because it actually was launched in spring of 2014, so it is just about five years old now and actually fits in that little window, but I feel like that palette and then the subsequent palettes that launched after it really did start the trend of the scented makeup and the food inspired makeup. Like I feel like even though we had the chocolate bronzers before that, it wasn't until the chocolate bar palette series launched that I feel like Too Faced really took that whole idea and ran with it. And I feel like the industry as a whole kind of embraced the whole idea of scented makeup as a thing that like people really want. You know, we see now Tarte is infusing their palettes with a vanilla scent. I think Pure Cosmetics has also done it. And like, I don't think those brands would have done that if Too Faced had just had the chocolate scented bronzers by themselves. I feel like that was kind of like a, like a cool novelty thing and maybe someone else would have done something similar to that as a bronzer. I don't think people would have thought to put scent in eyeshadows until Too Faced did it. And it's funny because I feel like now Too Faced is like pulling back on the chocolate bars. Like, I don't think they've officially announced that they're like discontinuing them, but I just get the feeling like they discount them a lot. I don't think they make the semi-sweet chocolate bar palette anymore. I don't know if they still make the bonbons. So like, I feel like the era of the chocolate bar is coming to an end, but it was the OG. I feel like that palette was something that so many people used and loved and it was so unique at the time. The packaging was so cute and just the novelty of the whole chocolate scented thing. Like when that palette launched, it was special. It was something that people were really, really excited about. For whatever reason, I never bought it. It was expensive and I just couldn't afford a whole lot of high-end makeup at the time that like I started my blog. So I never bought it. And then, you know, just so many other things launched over the years that I just never wanted to invest my $50 in the chocolate bar. There were other neutral palettes that I like the color story of better, but I still respect it as a palette, as something that shaped uh, the industry and something that really like revolutionized makeup and also I feel like increased Too Faced's popularity because Too Faced was a brand that definitely people liked and talked about but I feel like the chocolate bar really like that that made that brand that was one of their most iconic products that they ever launched and I mean look at where we are now like they never would have launched Sweet Peach if the chocolate bar hadn't done that well and now they have an entire collection spun off from the success of Sweet Peach. So it's interesting to see how these things kind of progress over time. But yeah, I had to definitely include the chocolate bar palette on my list because it's to me one of the most iconic launches of the last five years for sure. And then number 10, the very last one, to be honest, I almost could just take this whole brand. They could just take this whole brand and just say they're iconic because they are less than five years old and I feel like they in of themselves are a trend. And that brand is ColourPop. So ColourPop launched in 2014. So when I started my blog in June of 2013, there was no ColourPop. There were no Super Shock eyeshadows. There were no lippy sticks. They did not exist, which is so crazy because I feel like ColourPop now is one of those brands that is talked about constantly. I mean, they're always launching new makeup. Like every week it's something different. They have really cool, trendy products. They're very innovative. They're very colorful, obviously. And most of all, they are affordable. They've managed to keep their prices very reasonable. So you're able to get really fun, funky products that are trendy without having to spend like an arm and a leg. So like the original products they launched with, which were the Super Shock Shadows and the Lippy Sticks, like those definitely are iconic products. Like especially the Super Shock, I feel like no one else has done quite exactly the same thing as them and they're still only $5 and they're very, very, at this point I almost feel like underrated because ColourPop has launched so much that's new. I feel like the Super Shocks don't get as much attention as all their new launches. But like the glittery Super Shock shadows, they're so gorgeous and so reflective. And I feel like now that glitter is such a trend, I'm kind of like, why are people not paying more attention to the Super Shocks again? They are like the OG of the glitter eyeshadow. So there was really no way I could come up with this list and not include ColourPop. And really, 
almost every single one of their launches has been spectacular. Like they've had a few duds here and there, but for the most part, their makeup is amazing. The quality is so good, not even just for the price, like just in general. And the fact that it is so affordable and so accessible is awesome. I feel like NYX is the only brand that's remotely comparable to ColourPop, but I gotta give it to ColourPop. I feel like something about their aesthetic is like a notch above NYX. Like, even though they're drugstore priced, I feel like the quality of their packaging, the way their products just look and feel, is more akin to something high end than anything else I've tried at that price point. So I, I just think ColourPop is bomb. Yes, they're totally overwhelming with how much stuff they launch. It drives me absolutely crazy, but I have to hand it to them. They are trendsetters. They're doing some crazy awesome things. They're launching products that are really cool, unique, and innovative. And I feel like of all the brands that have hit the scene in the last five years, ColourPop has probably made like the biggest mark for itself. Like just how successful they have managed to become in the last five years is totally insane. All right guys, so that is my entire list. Those are my 10 most iconic beauty products that have launched in the last five, six years, or at least since I've started blogging-ish. And again, definitely let me know if there's something that I missed. Like what would you include in your list if you were gonna pick like the most iconic beauty products of the last five years? Would you pick the same ones? Would you pick different ones? Leave a comment and let me know. And on that note, I have been hacking up a lung through this entire video. I should be able to hopefully cut all of it out so you won't have to listen to me hacking and coughing for, you know, 25 minutes. But this bug I've had has been no freaking joke. My tonsils are much better. My throat doesn't hurt anymore, which has been very good. But now it's all just in my lungs and I can't stop coughing and it's kind of miserable. So I'm going to let you guys go. But I hope you have an amazing rest of your day. I hope you are healthier and feeling much better than me. And I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.